Although most of us can cope with a bit of mess in our homes, when it gets out of hand, you need help. So is Ron Alford, although he calls himself a disaster master. We're such consumers that we buy ten times more than we can consume. That then is the beginning of a thing called disposophobia. Too much stuff and too many people hanging on to stuff, they're just afraid to get rid of it. Hi, Peggy. Hi. Today, Ron's going to the aid of Peggy Easton in Upper Manhattan. I, uh, I have to quit meeting you like oh, this. Yes, we gotta... Peggy is blind and lives in the apartment with her husband Stephen and guide dog Kelly. Okay. If you'll just go back over here, you, yes. and, you and Kelly, uh, and sit down over there. Okay. All right, I'll go get my guys and I'll bring them all in here one at a time. It's not Peggy who has caused this mess. It's her husband. I don't know if my husband realizes that it is as bad as it is. I think it's only a theory, but I think you can get used to living like this. The magazines, throw the magazines out, the tapes you save, all right? We've tried to have people come in and clean up, and but he never wanted to throw things away. You know, he says, well, I'll go through it, I'll go through it, do it, and you never do. So he never did, and then... I'll do it later. Right, and when he... Right, and when he did go through it... Ron has invented the term disposophobic. Everybody is a disposophobic. The bottom line to stuff, stuff is what we human beings keep to justify and to, to explain our existence on Earth. Every single piece of on here was a thought that generated in somebody's brain. And as a result of the thought, this occurred. So, the bottom line, I can see what you're thinking. Isn't that hysterical? Her husband's inability to throw anything away has become a real danger for Peggy, and she has resorted to sleeping on the floor because the bed is piled with junk. What's more, she fears eviction. Ron is very important to me, and the reason is because he's going to make it possible for me to be safe in this apartment. For me, he's going to get rid of all the hazards that are here. <clears throat> it's going to be... <clears throat> I'm going to clean it up so that I can have someone come in and, and clean it up, make it nice and clean and healthy. And... Um, He's going to prevent uh, probably me from being evicted or us from being evicted from this apartment. Peggy and her husband Stephen have been married for seven years. Sadly, he's seriously ill and is currently in the hospital. He's suffering from uh, cancer. Two kinds of cancer, lung cancer and something called angiosarcoma, which is a cancer of the blood vessels. It feeds off the blood vessels. And um, it's, he's terminal. It's serious. All right, looking good. Peggy wants to clear up the apartment as a surprise for Stephen's return home. I think he'll be relieved. I really do. Because, as I said, as sick as he is, he can't deal with this. He'll be, he'll be angry, you know. Oh, you threw away this, you threw it. But he'll get over that very quickly. And he'll be glad just that he'll be able to come in and be able to sit into his living room. Because he often says he wishes he could sit in his recliner. I wish I could see the expression on his face when he sees this apartment. Here's a tip for you. What? It's a dollar bill. Hey! Hey, you it's, know... It's no big deal. I've done any more stuff no, like no, this. No, this, no, this no. is all ripped, Ron. Yeah, Couldn't yeah. you have given it's, me... Oh, done. Ooh, this is no good, Ron. Done. Yeah, it's in the hat. Keep it. It's both halves are there. It's yeah, good. I'll find some tape in a few minutes. We'll tape it back together. <laughs> I have some masking tape in a drawer. That'll door. do. Peggy! Yes? I need you to come here by your closet now. Okay. I'm here. You notice, you notice how much more room oh you have God. to walk around in? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I know that you're looking Whoa. for things to strip and fall. Now, there are still things on the floor. Oh. But this is a whole new life for you already. Gee. Wow. Are you blown away? <laughs> I can't. It's, I can feel it. <laughs> Come on. All right. Now, over here in your closet, all right? Oh, my God. This I can't even get right. Well, no, you notice how much more space you got? Yeah, there what you happened? Are. Well, we took all the stuff off the floor. It's oh all gone. Oh, my God. Look all at that. All the debris is gone. Holy Hannah. Jeez. Oh, oh, all right. Ron, I love I'm going to marry I think I'll marry you. I can have two husbands. Yeah. Yes. You could? Yes. You won't tell. No, I wouldn't tell. Take that out of here. Uh huh. You're looking for your husband's uh, birth certificate? 
Well, I was looking for mine. Well, I found your husband's. Maybe I'm going to find yours, too, in here. Where'd you find that? Well, there's a strong box here on the floor that was buried underneath a bunch of stuff. Oh, is that are there, that's where his papers are? Yeah, well, some of them. They're not all here. Uh, in any event, this buggy, yeah. take this and put it in the bedroom on the bed. <coughs> At Peggy Easton's home, the cleanup is almost finished. She's ready for her husband Stephen's return from the hospital. Uh, oh. All right, here we are, back home again in one piece. Once again, Ron Alford has come to Peggy's aid. Her husband's condition seriously deteriorated overnight and Ron is accompanying her on her return trip from the hospital. I'm You all right? Yeah. Good. Good. Hi, Renette. I just want to let you know that Stephen died this morning at 9 o'clock. And um, he died this morning, and I just want to let you know. I got to tell you, this morning I got here almost at 8 o'clock, and... Uh, I got started, and then all of a sudden, uh, phone rang. And uh, Peggy went south on me. I know uh, you went through this. She so you know went hysterical. Um, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> no, Go ahead, I took the phone. The nurse says, your husband's going down. And I don't think he's going to last another 15 minutes. So, mm. pandemonium happened. I, uh, I'm in a crisis management business. I do well until it's over with and not fall apart, uh, which is now. I didn't make it. He died before I got there, but it was peaceful. It was, he, would die, he went peaceful. He wasn't alone. That's, I was afraid that he'd die alone. But he didn't die alone. The doctor was with him, and the nurse, Jill, was with him that I know. So that's what happened. So, uh, you know, um, when I got there, I said goodbye to him. So, I mean, this is not how I planned my life. We were going to retire together, but, you know. So now, basically, I'm alone again, you know, starting all over again without him. I've never had one of these. I've been through a lot of stuff. I've been, I've gone in and knocked on the door and the people inside have been dead or a person's been in dead. Uh, I've had clients that I've taken out of nursing homes or taken out of houses like this and put in halfway houses in nursing homes and managed them until they die. Uh, I've buried five of my clients. But I've never had somebody like this. This is a new day for me. It must have been cold there in my shadow To never have sunlight on your face You always walked a step behind for so long You were content to let me shine You are the wind beneath my wings For you 